All right, now we're going to talk about currents. Let's start with the surface. Surface currents are affected by three major components, wind, the Coriolis effect, and land masses position. So let's start with wind. If I look at my wind patterns of the, of the globe and the United States, but mostly the globe, notice near the equator, all of the wind blows towards the west. Well now, if I go over to my map of the surface currents, near the equator, my currents are blowing to the west. That's because wind is blowing the currents. In the mid-latitude regions, notice that it now blows towards the east. And if I go back over here to my mid-latitudes, like the United States here, we have a current that blows towards the east. And that's a result of wind. You may also notice that when these currents come in and hit a landmass, in the northern hemisphere, they bend to the right. In the southern hemisphere, when they come, they bend to the left. And that's because of the Coriolis effect. And that's because we're not just stationary. The Earth is actually spinning, which causes our currents to bend in different directions. So if I'm looking at this, and I also see that there's red and blue currents. Red indi currents indicate warm currents coming from the equator. So if I look, I don't want to get too close, but let's look a little closer. Into the United States, we have warm water coming from the equator up towards Florida and connecting with our Gulf Stream that brings warm water across um, the United States on the East Coast. It also carries that warm water over to Europe to give Europe, uh, places like Great Britain, a warmer climate than other, other places of the same latitude. Now, if we look on the west coast, we have cold water pulling, coming down from the poles. So it's a cooler water on the west coast. The same is true on the west coast of South America. In those areas where the cold water is coming down, we also are creating an upwelling which is water from the bottom is brought to the surface. So as our wind blows our current across the equator, it allows water to upwell from the bottom, bringing nutrients to the top. So you have lots of migrating whales and dolphins and sharks. They like these upwelling areas where there's lots of nutrients. Now, during El Nino, this current that's normally blowing the warm water towards the west actually begins to blow towards our upwelling. And what it does is it stops the upwelling from occurring. And that changes the weather patterns. It gives us a little bit more of a wet pattern for the bottom of our country. And it dries out some of the Midwest. But it changes our weather patterns um, and affects the different circulation around the globe. It actually can affect everywhere in the globe. Because notice these currents connect all the oceans. And they're distributing all the heat around the world. Now, that's surface currents. What about below the surface? So below the surface are density currents, or deep currents. They're driven by salinity and temperature. Saltier water sinks, so things like the Mediterranean Sea. It's much, much saltier because there's a high level of evaporation and low precipitation. So the water is saltier, and that water would sink when it enters the Atlantic, and it does. Temperature can affect it as well. Colder water sinks. So cold Antarctic water, bottom water, is one of the coldest and densest of our oceans. And it's generally found on the bottom of the ocean because it's colder than the other water around it.